The equipment list is where you can see all of your assets. So to get to the equipment list, click on equipment on the left hand side. Here it'll bring up a list of all of your units. Equipment and Maintenance Pro Web are organized by locations and categories. So notice on the top where it says equipment in the heading, there's a folder button to the left. If I click on this, it'll show me my location list. And then within each location, I have at least one category, but you can have as many as you would like. If I want to view equipment that belongs to just one location, I can click on it on the left hand side. Or you can use the drop down box on the top underneath the equipment heading where it says main location here. I can click on it, go back to all locations or choose a specific one. While we're talking about locations, I'll go ahead and let you know where you can add new ones, or let's say you want to add new categories or change the existing ones, you can do that as well. To do that, on the top right, click on the gear button, click on locations, and here you'll have a list of all of your locations. If you want to add a new one, you can click the blue new button on the top right. Likewise, you can edit an existing location by using the gear or you can duplicate one. You can also click on a location name and that'll bring you to the edit screen. On the edit location screen, you can edit the name at the top, the tax rates, which are used for your work orders. You can set a tax on labor as well as parts if you'd like. And then you'll have a list of categories. Each location has at least one category. You can hit the blue add category button to add a new one. And you can type in whatever you would like here and hit save. So now if we go back, my location, or I'm sorry, my two categories are here. If for whatever reason I don't want to have a category there, as long as there's no equipment in the category, I can click the, the red X on the right hand side. If equipment is still inside the category, that X is a grayish color letting you know it's, it's not actually going to delete it until you move the equipment out. Back to our equipment list. On the top, we went over the location drop down filter. There's also a location, or I'm sorry, there's also another filter underneath equipment. Right now it's set to all, but if we click on this, we have quite a few options. The first option says my, so if we click on this, you'll see that I only have one unit right now. This means I only see equipment that's assigned to me or to the user that I'm logged in as. So if I were to click on this unit here, we can see that I'm the assignee. So that corresponds with this my filter. We can also view equipment that are only with an active status, so we can hide anything that's inactive. Do will show me equipment only that has the tasks that are due or overdue. Work order assigned will give me a list of all equipment that have an open or pending work order currently. And then I have some other statuses here that I can choose from. If we go to all, it'll give us everything. One status that's a bit special than the other ones is the deleted status. So if we were to go through and delete a unit, for example, let's say I wanted to delete the tow truck here. To do so, I'd click on the name, hit the gear on the top right, choose delete. It's going to ask me, am I sure? We'll go ahead and say OK. Now if I change my status to deleted, you can see that the equipment is here still in this list. So it's not completely removed from the system. You do have an option to hit undelete on the right hand side if you want to put it back. So let's say you deleted the wrong equipment by accident. Otherwise, if you choose the destroy option, then that unit will be permanently gone along with all of its maintenance history and history records. So for now, we'll go ahead and undelete. So we'll put that back into our equipment list. Oops. Let's go ahead and switch this back to all. So now you'll see my tow truck is here. 
on the top right of the equipment list, we have a search box. So you can use this to quickly search for a unit ID, or you can search for, let's say, a type. You can also search for keywords. So basically, most of the columns that are on display, you can use the search box with. So it'll help you easily find a piece of equipment that you want to work on or make changes to. To the right of the search box, there's a blue New button. So this is if we want to add a new piece of equipment. You can also do so by using the uh, New Record button, this plus sign on the top left, to the left of the search box. So you can hit Equipment here. You can also hit the plus sign on the left-hand side menu next to Equipment here. Before we go into adding equipment, let's stay on this screen for another moment. To the right of the New button, if you click the three lines here, you'll have a print option. So this is a quick way if you want to just print the whole list. Export to CSV means that you can save this list to an Excel sheet. Customize lets you go in and change which columns you're viewing. So if I wanted to throw in a column for let's say the location category and save it, now those, those columns are here and they'll show up on my printouts or let's say I can I can go ahead and search for them as well. So the customize function is quite handy for that. Let's go ahead and click on the new button to add a new unit to the, to the list. The very first box is unit ID number. So this can be, you know, just like our examples, it's usually a letter and a number, um, but essentially something that is easy for you to look up or to reference um, to, to find that piece of equipment in the system. So this is one of the most important um, values that you'll have to add for a unit. So we'll go ahead and call this one um, 200. We'll call it um, T200. Description, you can type whatever you would like. So for this, we'll just call it um, truck. Type of equipment, you can type whatever you would like here as a value. So if I wanted to, I can say this is a light truck. Make, model, and year. Pretty self-explanatory, that. Keywords. So remember the search box on the equipment list. Uh, you can use keywords here to make it easier to find equipment. So if you have something special, let's say um, you can say generator. So now that's a keyword. So if I go and do a search for this unit and type in generator added or whatever you put in here, this unit will show up. Scan key, you can add like a, a UPC code, kind of like what we do with the parts. Uh, you can do that with the equipment as well. So you can put a barcode on the unit and then scan it so you can pull it up in the list quicker. Serial number or VIN number, tag number. There's a checkbox here for equipment has a meter. You'll want to check this if you're tracking by miles or hours uh, or kilometers. So here we're just going to say we're doing miles and we can put in the current mileage reading. We've got some extra boxes. If we scroll down, you can put the color in, who's assigned to the unit. Remember when we added uh, locations and categories? Uh, so you can go in here and say which location and category. Uh, this unit belongs to. So we'll leave it in the main location, but, but we'll put it in trucks. Parent. So the, the best example to, to explain this is if you have, let's say, a truck and a trailer, the truck would be the parent of the trailer. So that way you can kind of tell the system that they're linked together somehow. You can put in purchase information, like the day you bought it, the price, the meter readings, and so on. You can set if there's any warranties. You can change the status if you own the unit, the fuel units, if you're doing gallons or meters. If you have a maintenance template set up, which is a, essentially a, a list of tasks that are common between equipment, you can choose one here. Inspection templates, you can also add one here. You can actually add multiple if you have multiple checklists that you need to use. You can set a budget and notes. 
if there's any data that doesn't really fit in these boxes, let's say you want to track a type of oil filter or some other kind of ID number, uh, you can use the custom fields box here, or we can add a custom field box. If we click on new custom field, we can type in a name for this. So let's say um, oil filter type. And then you can, whoops, have to remember when you type something new, hit the the blue on the bottom to save it. So we can type in, you know, whatever you want here. You can do one that's called engine type, uh, whatever you would like. Um, and in another video, we'll go over custom labels or custom fields, and we'll show you how you can organize or manage these. But just know that this is available here. If this is the only unit that we're adding, we can click on save, or we can click on save new if we want to keep you know, stay on this screen and add something else. So we'll go ahead and hit save. So I set up a maintenance template to go on this unit. So the next screen is giving me a task that's on that template and it's asking me the last time it was done. So by default, it'll leave it at today with the current meter, but you can say, hey, I really did the oil change, you know, let's say for this example at 72,000 miles. That way it'll make the system more accurate as far as the maintenance task, the tracking. If we go back to our equipment list, you'll see our T200 is here. I have my keyword here for generator added, so I just search for added and it's here now. So that's how you add a new unit. If I need to make changes to an existing unit, so let's say I wanted to add more information or forgot to put something in here, uh, you'll want to change it. So to edit the unit, you would click on it, click on the name. This will bring you to the profile screen and notice everything that we typed into the equipment earlier is all here. We can click on the blue edit button on the top right and now we're back to the same screen that we, we saw when we were adding the unit in. On this profile screen, you have some additional tabs on the top here. So if you click on tasks, and I change this to all, it brought over my oil change because of that maintenance template that I assigned to it. If any work has been done, or inspections or fuel transactions, I can go here to the history tab and view all that. Attachments, you can add, let's say, a, a small PDF manual or pictures, just anything like documentation that you want to keep with this unit. Uh, to reference it later. If I want to perform any actions to the unit, we can click our action gear on the right. So let's scroll down a bit here. So I can go here and fill out inspections, make a work order, and I can start basically assigning tasks and doing work on this equipment now, track maintenance costs and so on. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel, or for more information about our software products, you can visit our website at mtcpro.com.